Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use the new Canon plugin for uh, Final Cut Pro to log and, and transfer information off SD cards in a similar way that you had with a tape workflow. So in a, in a tape workflow you'd obviously have the, the, the tape from the camera which you would capture into, the, into your computer uh, using the log and capture functionality in Final Cut Pro. Uh, and then put the tape away somewhere very safe. So in the unlikely event that you uh, lose the information off your hard disk, you can use the capture, the log capture to uh, put the, go and grab the tape um, and recapture those clips. Now and that of course relies on you uh, keeping a good track of real names. Um, now with SD cards, I personally got a couple of cards and I'll just label them up as say SD01, SD02. Um, once you've done the shooting on those and captured them into the computer, then they get wiped off and put back in the camera for reuse, which is unlike uh, the workflow you'd use for tape. Um, but what, what's essential is that you have this master backup. Now, uh, if, if you try to use the disk utility to create an image of, uh, say, this card here, SD02, uh, SD02 will be burnt into it and you've lost that kind of master tape uh, relationship because the the names aren't unique so I, I personally keep a log uh, uh, of all the of all the tape or the next tape name uh, so this one here that I want to catch is going to be MSD0020 so obviously in the field I know that I've put it on SD02 and I would just add uh, another column to my log notes to say this has now been uh, transferred to master tape 0020 a little bit confusing but um, if you work through this you, you'll understand where I'm going so I'm just going to grab the files and drop them into this into this folder just the entire uh, everything off of the SD card it's very important for the uh, for the log and capture plugin that you, you capture everything uh, there are a number of files uh, that normally just ignore them because they're, they're kind of JPEGs uh, these THMs but the plugin absolutely needs those uh, or appears to need those uh, in, in order to register that those clips are, are on the disk so once we've created the, the folder, uh, we just go to the disk utility in here. And go File, New Disk Image from Folder. Select our folder, click Image, and we'll save it. And then notice that it's keeping this naming convention that I've just used called MSD0020. And that's going to be the real name uh, that we'll see in a moment with the Final Cut um, plugin uh, that, that will be captured in, into the clips. So now that that, that has been, uh, been captured into an image, uh, the next stage in the process is to take your image uh, and I advise backing it up onto your onto your backup hard hard disk or your FireWire drive or whatever backup mechanism you've got, and that is effectively your master. Uh, now the other thing I want to do is to eject the actual SD card here, uh, and obviously we don't need disk utility. Um, and the next part in this process is to mount this newly created disk image. And there it is, and it will it will contain exactly the same. Uh, files that we had on our actual uh, SD card. So the next stage in this process is to go into Final Cut Pro here and use the uh, log and transfer functionality. Oops, we don't want that. And instantly you can see that um, Final Cut has, has recognized this as an external media uh, card. Um, one, one thing to check here for the Canon plugin is go to uh, the preferences uh, and for that movie just make sure that you've selected the correct target format. Now I believe uh, when this plugin came it was set to ProRes 444. Uh, for most of the work I do I use ProRes 422LT, uh, just a little bit smaller files I believe. So now that we have all these clips we can select them all, add the selection to the queue and Final Cut will now go off and ingest uh, those files from this uh, virtual disk image. Okay, and one thing to notice is that the real name here uh, matches the volume uh, that we had on our uh, disk backup. Uh, obviously, you could you could have filled out all these uh, other fields, uh, but I've I've skipped these just for um, just for the sake of this tutorial. So here are my clips. 
so that they all load up as they were. And if we now look at the uh, clip settings, uh, we can see that that has indeed done uh, the ProRes um, codec on these files and got us away from the H.264, which is the real benefit of the Canon um, plugin. So let's just uh, reveal this clip in Finder because what I want to show you is um, there we go, and I'm just going to actually delete this off the. Yeah, this, see, this is the peril of using a, a default project, untitled project four, very sloppy. Um, but I'm just going to get rid of this file for, for now, um, and then we'll see from Final Cut Pro uh, that the media is now gone um, offline. Uh, one thing also that I want to do, just 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 for a second, is to jet that disk. So let's assume now that this this is on our backup drive and we don't actually have it mounted. Um, on on our machine. Um, in the same way, you you would right click uh, or, or control click um, and do batch capture uh, to go and get this here. And it's now saying that the real name MSD 0020 is is missing. So now you can go off to your backup drive, um, pull back the, uh, the the image and, and mount that um, there, and straight away. Uh, Final Cut Pro, Pro will start transferring that um, back in and it's now back online. Not sure why that login, that's a part of the login transfer window. So but there we go. So that has, that has now pulled that back in um, in the same way as you would have done with a tape-based workflow.